All right, welcome back. I know that it's been a while since we've had our last WSQ, but this time it's gonna be even more exciting because we are starting a brand new unit. And I know some of you are just dying to sink your teeth into our multiplication. So this edition of our multiplication is going to be the groups of lesson. So we're gonna talk about what that really means but you've heard me say, you know, we have three groups of four or five groups of six, and we've been able to kind of wade our way through it. Well, now we're going to talk about how we really design that to work. So our I can statement, or what we hope to accomplish by the end of this lesson, is that I can multiply two numbers together using the groups of technique. And we're going to talk about what that is. So it's important when we look at a multiplication problem, as I have here, that we actually understand what are those different components called. Because remember, in our classroom, we use excellent mathematician vocabulary. We don't always stick with kid language. So we're going to add some special words to these components of a multiplication problem. So my 3 and my 4 are both going to be called something that is called a factor. Okay, a factor is any number that multiplies by another number to get a larger quantity, okay? So it's any number that I'm multiplying by another number, okay? So those are my what? Factors, fabulous. And then I have this number back here, and remember, we have a fancy word for every answer depending on the kind of problem that it is. So if it's an addition problem, remember it was sum, and if it's a subtraction problem, remember the answer was called a difference. Well, in multiplication, our answer is going to be called a product. Okay, So what is the product of my two factors? Does that make sense? All right, so now the time has come for us to actually sink our teeth into a problem. So if I give you the problem 4 times, let's do 5, equals something. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that line blank. Okay, so if I have 4 times 5 equals something, this really translates to this little x here, our multiplication sign, is going to mean groups of. Okay, so what's going to be really helpful is if we draw a picture. So I'm going to have how many groups? I'm going to have 4 groups of 5, right? So let's do our four groups, and I'm going to color code it. So I have four groups, so I'm going to just draw four circles. Two, three, four. Do you see how I have four circles? Okay. And then inside it, that will be my blue, okay, five. So I'm going to put five in each. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. 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 All right, so now I can add up what's in each of these to figure out how many tallies I have total. So I should have 5, 10, 15, 20 tallies total. So I know that 4 times 5 is actually 20. So now let's try another problem, and this time I have actually done 5 times 4. So let's look at how our picture will change. So I'm going to have 5 groups of 4. So let's do my 5 first. So I'm going to do that in green. How many circles do I draw? Very good. It should be 5. And then how many do I put in each one? Very good. It should be 4. So I'm going to do 4 tallies. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So now I know that I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 tallies. Now, what do you notice about my answer? It's the same, isn't it? And remember what we called that? That was called our commutative property. Remember how we did that in addition? If we add in any order, it doesn't matter. Okay, so my commutative property says that I can multiply in any order and still get the same product either way. All right, so now you're going to have an example of your own. I would like for you to multiply 6 by 4 and see what you get. Um, remember, go ahead and pause the video, and you can go through the problem. Remember, this should be my groups, and this is how many goes in each one, okay? So those two factors, that's, there is a specific order that this has to be done in. Um, 
It's not as important now because we're just getting the same answer. However, when we move to arrays, which we've practiced a little bit in class in our spiral, that will be really important. So we want to know that this is groups of and this is how many is in each group, okay? All right, so go ahead and do this problem. When you finish, come back, we will check it, and then we'll be about done. All right, so you should have six circles on your paper. just like my groups of here. And then how many did I put in each one? Should have been four. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And so my answer should be twenty-four. All right, here is your challenge problem for you to work on and then we will go over in class. I want you to multiply eight times seven and see what you get. And this is my favorite multiplication problem. And I'm going to show you the trick once you get the correct answer. So bring this to class with you and we will go over it. All right, and I will leave you today with your riddle. Your riddle this uh, video is what has hands but cannot clap? Hmm, curious. I can't wait to hear your thoughts, and I can't wait to start this multiplication journey with you. Um, if you can't tell, I really love multiplication, and I hope that you do too by the end.